Long ago, when the pyramids were still young, Egyptian kings played a game of great and terrible power. But these shadow games erupted into a war that threatened to destroy the entire world, until a brave and powerful pharaoh locked the magic away, imprisoning it within the mystical Millennium Items. Now, 5,000 years later, a boy named Yugi unlocks the secret of the Millennium Puzzle. He is infused with ancient magical energies, for destiny has chosen him to defend the world from the return of the Shadow Games, just as the brave Pharaoh did 5,000 years ago. Get from 12 to 14 year olds, all the way up to 20, and myself, I'm in my 30s. So we get a really big span of ages of uh, people that are, are coming out and playing. Um, so, you know, even though the game is in America geared more towards the younger, the 12 to 16, um, it, the, the professional play, the tournament play, is, is a pretty wide age range. Oh, isn't he cute when he's thinking? Hey, Tristan, Yugi here's teaching me how to play dual monsters. Drooling monsters? Dual monsters, you Nimrod. <laughs> Alright, you go players, can I have your attention please? Just a couple of quick announcements. We do have Astro Pack 1 today, so you guys will be getting that for entry. Um, and for everyone who uh, might be new, there will be five rounds today. Uh, top 8, you will play every round regardless whether you uh, suck or are awesome. Okay? So, Paris round 1. Okay, Yugi. It's time to duel. See, each card has an attack number and a defense number. First player to eliminate their opponent's life points wins the duel. Pretty good move, huh, Yugi? Pretty good move, but not good enough. What? Thanks a lot! So, I would say I was just a kid and I loved the show. And my stepbrother, Ricky, um, got me into it actually. And we used to print off cards uh, online because they weren't out yet and tape them to cardboard and go around and play. Pretend we were summoning the monsters. Uh, you can go. Cool. It was great. How many cards in Six? I have, actually, Three, four, five, six, I have seven, seven, so I need to pitch one. My brother Ricky brought in. After a while, we both got starter decks. Didn't know how to play. We were just summoning the biggest guys. It was the best way to play. Ooh, exactly. Went to our first tournament. After the first tournament, realized we were playing completely wrong and didn't know what to do. And then we just focused in on it. So I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh uh, right when it came out. I was working for the WB Network at the time, which aired the uh, original series. And uh, as a promotion, they gave everyone in the station the starter decks before they had come out. Um, and so I was uh, part of a promotions team that needed to learn how to play the game so we could talk to kids at events and say, hey, here's this new show, it comes with this game, you should totally play. Um, so that I'd never really played a card game before, I wasn't really into them, um, but because I had all this stuff for free, I figured I might as well. Uh, so I started playing for a little while, um, figuring out, you know, just based on the show, because I didn't read the rule book, because like, rules are dumb. Uh, so I just guessed on how to play, so uh, like a lot of other people, I was just throwing everything out if possible, and however they did in the TV show, that's what I did and played. Um, and this was about 11 years ago, right, um, right when Yu-Gi-Oh! first came out. Uh, and then eventually I went to a tournament and uh, just got destroyed, uh, absolutely wrecked. And I, so I sat back and I watched people play for about two or three tournaments before I played again. And I started learning the rules a little more, so it, it was easier for me to figure out how the game actually went. And then I said, uh, all right, suck it up, and I uh, read the rule book. That made a lot more sense to me. What bugs me the most is that he only gets two days a week off, and one of them is spent with Yu-Gi-Oh. There is a room pretty much dedicated to Yu-Gi-Oh in my house. It's the baby's room. He's completely taken over the baby's room with Yu-Gi-Oh cards. He's talking. Look, it's me. He wants to teach our baby how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm perfectly fine with it because it teaches strategy and it's good, but um, I don't want her to be that nerdy. <laughs> No.
now, Kaiba. Prepare yourself, because it's time to duel. Um, so I've been running tournaments now for about uh, eight years. So I did uh, regional events, uh, regional qualifiers, which uh, basically allow people to, um, they play and if they win, they get to play in a nationals tournament, and then if they win that, they get to play in the world's tournament. Um, so that was really fun for me because it also allowed me to see the behind the scenes part of you know the tournament software that at the time Upper Deck was using um, before uh, Upper Deck uh, lost control and Konami took over. Um, so that was pretty fun to see you know the amount of kids that would come out. You know we would do a local regionals and get 200 plus people. Um, you know, in a fairly small town, like Syracuse is, is fairly small, Rochester is not that much bigger. Um, we were getting a lot of people there, which is really nice. Um, we had a lot of great prizes, a lot of great support from Upper Deck, and then eventually a lot of great support from Konami. Uh, now I run tournaments here at uh, Comic Zone in North Syracuse. Um, you know, we, on average, receive around 20 people. Um, so it's pretty cool, so we get a lot, a big brand, uh, uh, like a large amount of people. Me, duel you, I would have more of a challenge playing solitaire. Going first? No, you're not. I'm going first. All right, so I went to this tournament uh, a couple weeks ago, I believe, and I was playing Watts, which is like unheard of to play at a big event. Who does that? Just me. Just me. I uh, started 5-0. Um, that it was a quite the experience. Like 5-0 with a deck that nobody's done anything with ever before. Like it feels good. Like, I was the first to do this. And then you get a feature match, so you're on the you're on this huge screen in front of everybody there. And you're like, oh I'm getting put on the spot, I gotta do work. Not this guy. I got destroyed. Skill drain. Chateau. Take it. I gotta do life points. What? It's a like wind up factory. I needed a record of only two losses. Got three, didn't make it. It hurt a little bit, you know. No big deal though. Still felt good. Felt like a champion, like queen. I mean, it's not always even having all this stuff, it's just, like, sometimes you can get really good deals, people will buy things off you for prices you'd be really surprised about. People really need it, they'll overvalue it and you can get more out of it. Name your price, I can pay anything you ask. Um, thanks. You have choice. You can sell, I sold a lot when I went to Rhode Island, I got like, Six or seven hundred dollars off of just little stuff, it adds up really fast. Me first. Okay. A YCS is basically like a large event where people from all over the country go. Rhode Island was 2,200 people. You basically played um, nine rounds day one, and then day two, the top players came back with the best records. You play two more, and that goes to um, a top 32 single elimination playoff. I finished 9 2 and moved on to top 32 and moved all the way to top eight where I lost to one of my friends. He wanted to top two. So out of 2,200 people. Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this, Yugi. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. But it does contain the unstoppable Exodia. Ah, impossible! I've assembled all five special cards, all five pieces of the puzzle. Exodia! Uh, it's not possible! No one's ever been able to call him! Exodia! Obliterate! You did it! Yugi, you won! This can't be! My brother never loses! You play only for power, Kaiba, and that is why you lost. But if you put your heart in the game, there is nothing you can't do. <laughs>